greetings to all my brothers and sisters. So I was very excited to hear about this particular conference because um, the work that I'm doing with the future of power ties in very intimately with all that's been said over the course of these few days. So um, just to say a little bit, because I think many of you don't know what is the Brahma Kumaris, but basically it's an organization, a spiritual organization run by women. And I do make that point because as our speaker said today, women do have a high spiritual quotient and it may help to have more women present in conferences like this. Um, just to go to the point now, because I've just been told the time's a bit shorter. <laughs> so the Future of Power is a program that's taking part in 32 cities throughout India. And what we're doing is organizing dialogues amongst leaders. So we're inviting just 30 leaders from each city or state to come together with five or six international guests as well as three or four from the Brahma Kumaris to talk about the future of power. This topic emerged seeing the situation in the world today and this very historic time that power is now shifting from the West back to the East. And I'm sure you know everyone's eyes are only on two countries and that is China and India. So what we're doing is bringing the leaders together to explore how Indian leaders might direct this power so that it can be used in a more benevolent way. Because we talk about two aspects of power, what we call hard power, which is the gun, money, position, which is the dominant understanding of power in our day now. But India has a great heritage of what we call soft power, which means ruling with spirituality, values, culture, and all that will be sustainable. And so what this dialogue is about is bringing leaders together from all different fields, from arts, medicine, education, science, bringing these leaders together to dialogue. There's no lectures, no presentation. It's four hours or sometimes a whole day program, eight hours of dialogue. Because what we'd like to do is to bring out this wisdom that is deep in the psyche of the Indian people, as we've heard so much about over these few days. And we see that the, the culture of India is more inclined towards soft power than hard power. In fact, even when I talk about soft power, I see there's already a bit of an awakening in people's mind because it's something very close to the heart of Indian people. I don't know whether India could compete with hard power. I don't know if you would want to. And what's very interesting is when I talk about power with different leaders, what's very nice is that the leaders, I always hear one thing, we don't want to be a superpower. We don't want to be like America and other countries. We'd like to share power. We are not powerful, we are empowered. When we think that we are powerful, we make a mess of things. We become destructive, which is what you could really say is hard power. It's when we think that the power is mine. But when there's this awareness that power is coming through me from the divine, there's only one that's powerful. And so if I can channel that power and use it in whichever field, then we can make a difference. And what the message is also about is the power of one. One person can make a big difference. At the moment, we're seeing that the leaders have kind of lost the confidence of the people. People don't really even want to listen to them anymore, but there's a void. 
There's a void of leadership. What's between that and the masses? And what we're saying is there's so many leaders in India that can make a huge difference and it's time for them to rise up, come into their power and voice, bring a voice to what they are doing and what they're thinking. So it's an awakening, it's also a gathering of research that we can find out what is this soft power, what is this spiritual power, the power of culture, what is this that we're talking about, so that that can be included in educational institutions. Because now when people study political science, they learn about hard power, but they don't learn about soft power. So there's an imbalance. And so you can see why I felt that this conference was a very good uh, place for me to explore what's going on. I just want to give a quote from Martin Luther King. Power without love is reckless and abusive. And love without power is sentimental and anemic. This collision of immoral power with powerless morals constitutes the major crisis of our times. Power, properly understood, is nothing but the ability to achieve purpose. So these words were spoken long ago and yet the conversation around what is power, how to use power, what are the different kinds of power, hasn't really happened before. So this is what the future of power is about. It was started by an industrialist from Kenya, Nizar Juma. He's the chairman of 50 companies and he has started himself something called a blue company system of registering companies as corruption free. Even though he chairs 50 companies, he spent a, over 150 days in India last year for this project. He's from a Muslim background, he's an industrialist, and yet that love for India and for soft power is moving him to work so hard. He's 68 years old, also not a young man. So I just want to leave you then with just the last thought, and that is that if India doesn't show the way forward with soft power, what is the alternative? Where are we going? Think about it, because I don't know how much longer the planet and also the hearts and the heads, the soul of all of, all of us can continue with what we're calling hard power. Thank you for listening. Om Shanti.